Hey everybody, Madrib Red here. Elder Scrolls Oblivion, while completely invisible, was a hilariously broken mess of a run. Let's follow that up with a classic Pokemon solo challenge. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team of only one Magnemite? All right, this looks like it's gonna be a brutal one. I'm expecting this to go about as horribly as the Lieutenant Surge run. So we're all looking at the stats, right? Now, Magnemite is both weaker and stronger in Gen 1 than he is in the rest of the series, in a weird way. Uh, we're stronger because there's no special attack and special defense, just special. And we have a special of 95, so that's actually really high. Like, that's a lot more special defense, essentially, than a Magnemite would normally have. Problem is, Steel-type didn't exist in Gen 1, so we don't have all those resistances that would come with it, nor do we have, like, the Levitate ability or whatever it is Magnemite normally has in Gen 3 onward. We still have decent defense for a first-form Pokémon, but our health is awful. For level up moves, we don't really learn that much, just all the typical Gen 1 moves for electric types. Thundershock, Sonic Boom, Supersonic, Thunder Wave, Swift, Screech, all the standard ones. In fact, only the standard ones, since we don't learn things like Thunderbolt by level up. Yeah, I think I'm basically just rolling with Sonic Boom for rock and ground types, and then Thundershock for everything else until we get the Thunderbolt TM. Speaking of, here's the TM list. No Body Slam is rough, since that's usually the best normal move we can learn in Gen 1 runs, since, you know, Return didn't exist yet. Reflect could be pretty good since it doesn't wear off in Gen 1, but I'm not sure if I'll actually end up using it. You know, if being frail is too much of an issue at the end of the game, then maybe I could use Reflect and Rest? Then again, Rest is weaker in Gen 1 since you miss an extra turn. Probably not worth it. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. It wouldn't surprise me at all if I have to be level 100 to beat the ground gym, but other than that, I think that this run is possible. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Magnemite. I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokémon Randomizer to replace Charmander with Magnemite so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Charmander so that our rival would have Blastoise, not a super hard Pokémon to fight, but for sure harder than the Water Onyx we'd have to fight otherwise. Plus, this gives him Executor, a way more dangerous Pokémon in the final battle than Venusaur. I name him Voltorb, because that's hilarious. Okay, Force time. So, we have to do the early grind before the Rock Gym, like usual. I don't think it's gonna be that hard, I'm not really gonna be here forever. Yeah, we have terrible moves to deal with this team, and we don't really hit hard, but at least Sonic Boom will work for taking him down. Weirdly enough, we don't get our first electric move until level 25, and we get Sonic Boom at level 21, so we're just grinding with only Tackle for a little while. I really don't think Brock will be hard though, so let's just go ahead and try at level 21. Yeah, the Rock Gym was so easy, we didn't even take a hit. It was incredible. I don't expect Sonic Boom to get us many more easy wins though. So we're headed east next. We have a Water Gym coming up that you'd think would be easy, but we don't have an electric move, so I have to make sure to gain four levels on my way so that I do. Yeah, Thundershock sucks, but we have pretty high specials, so I'm not really that worried. The rival fight might be a bit harder, but he won't have a grass type yet, so I still think it'll be a first try, even if our moves aren't that great. I'm not too worried, I just want to make sure that I'm strong enough to beat the Electric Gym by the time that I get there. On our way through, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Water Gym time! So we were actually slower than Staryu, so we took a little bit of damage from Water Gun before one-shotting him. Decent start. Next is the much stronger Starmie. Its Water Gun didn't really do much to us, but its Bubble Beam on round two did. Still, it only took two shots for an easy win. Let's see if we get that lucky with the rival. So the rival was super easy, but what surprised me the most was that at the end he had a Bulbasaur. Whoops, I think I replaced Squirtle instead of Charmander when I made the ROM. <laughs> Uh, I can't really go back and fix that now. Whatever, I'd have one-shot Blastoise or Water Onyx anyway, although I would still argue that Executor is more dangerous at the end of the game because of how insanely annoying he is with sleep, but I guess having Bulbasaur on the guy's team will make it a little bit harder earlier in the game. Don't know if that balances out, but whatever. 
Next is Nugget Bridge. Yeah, this place isn't too bad either. There's like a hiker that I have to use Sonic Boom on, and it's kind of annoying when I have to fight grass types because I don't do much damage, but it's pretty rare to run into a real issue here. I still need to do it though, and it's worth getting as much experience as I can. Again, I'm convinced that the ground gym near the end of the run is going to be brutal after doing that Lieutenant Surge run, so getting experience now will save me some time later. Speaking of, Clearing out the SSN is great for experience. Lots of water types here, and although Thundershock is weak, we're still a pretty good special attacker with the same type attack bonus and they're weak to electricity, so it's easy. Easy like the rival on the SSN usually is. How do you think it'll go this time? Yeah, go super easy again. I guess Ivysaur puts up a little bit of a fight here, but really we were in no danger. I'm not really sure how the Electric Gym is gonna go right after this, though, since they're gonna resist our only passable move. Maybe Sonic Boom will be the right approach. First try at the Electric Gym. Right away things start slow and rough, as we not only take ages to take down Voltorb, but he lowered our defense a lot. Against Pikachu, I just paralyzed him and kept using Sonic Boom and Tackle. He did hit a quick attack, but we actually didn't take that much damage. Last was Raiju, and we didn't really get hurt by him much, so I paralyzed him early and kept spamming Sonic Boom. Thankfully, Surge forgot the point of a Pokemon battle and just spammed Growl and X Speed, so we won! As soon as I finished the gym, I used the TM for Thunderbolt to get what will probably be our most used move this whole run. Hey, with all that done, it's time to get through Rock Tunnel. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit worried. You know that hiker that likes to blow up three times, right? Well, I don't have three Pokemon to throw at him this time. We have good defense, but our health sucks. Plus, uh, don't self-destruct and explosion half your defense when they're calculating the damage you take? Maybe I'm misremembering? I don't know. I kind of feel like that's a rule, though. Regardless, this could be a problem. Well, we're going through Rock Tunnel. This episode's sponsored by, uh, <laughs> well, you on Patreon. Look, I can't get a sponsor for every challenge, that would require taking some sponsorships that aren't genuine, and I'm not willing to do that, I'm stubborn. So I'll just take the financial hit and shout out my Patreon instead. There's no reward on there or anything, it's just a place where you can show support if you'd like to. Oh, and of course you can like, get Chimera shirts and stuff. Uh, they didn't sponsor this episode or anything, but I'm, I'm literally wearing a Chimera shirt right now. And it's super comfy, so like, you know. <laughs> I don't get anything out of it if it's, like, not a sponsored video, but I don't care, it's it's good shirts. <laughs> hey, would you look at that? The hiker was super easy. He just never tried to blow up, so spamming Sonic Boom worked great. Alright, we're in the rocket hideout, and that means we have the first Giovanni fight soon. Considering how badly things go in here when I fight trainers with ground types, I'm kind of worried. I'm assuming his rock and ground types will be the only threats, but Sonic Boom is already really out of date. I hope we can take him down without too many problems. So it actually goes pretty well with Sonic Boom. It's still a bad move, but Onyx is a high defense and low health Pokemon, so stuff like Sonic Boom and Dragon Rage are pretty great against it in early game. At the end of the battle, we learned Swift, and unfortunately it's our best physical move that we can learn that doesn't deal recoil damage. I don't think I'll use it much, but I'm sure there's gonna be some use for it. Okay, you've gotta see this grass gym fight. Right away Thunderbolt does great damage to Victory Bell and paralyzes him, but we get put straight to sleep. Then we luck out and not only wake up right away, but his 95 accuracy Razor Leaf missed. Next round we hit Thunderbolt to nearly knock him out as he poisoned us. We finished him off and went into the Tangela fight with full health. Right away I paralyzed him, thinking that it might help us keep him from sticking us in a bind while we're poisoned. Unfortunately, it didn't work. We got hit with bind and got stuck in it for five whole rounds, taking bind and poison damage every single time. It took us down to half health. That's really not good. Last is Vile Plume, so I paralyzed it right away. Then we got hit by Petal Dance. With that little health left, I thought I was doomed, when we landed a critical hit to nearly one-shot it. Poison dropped us to 22 health, Petal Dance dropped us to only 4 health, and then we finished it off. One more round, and Poison would have made us faint. That was a great battle. Next is our rival again, but he was super easy. We didn't get hurt the whole fight, unless you count getting poisoned on the last round. Okay, so next up is the Poison Gym or Silph Co., whatever we want to do first. 
It's tradition that I go for the poison gym first, since if we win, then we can go to Cinnabar Island early and have a fun time taking down Blaine way ahead of time. If the poison gym goes badly though, then I'll try Silphco early. Hey, while we travel, it's time for another session of MDB AMA. Yeah, sorry I haven't done this in like a month or something. Uh, I could explain, but we'd be here forever. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab a few comments that contain the acronym MDB AMA, all one word, and then I'll answer them on the show. Okay, first question, and I get this one a lot. Masa wants to know why I don't use vitamins in my Pokemon challenges. Well, the answer is that I do use them a little bit if I stumble across helpful ones early enough in the game, but all vitamins do in Gen 3 and onward is raise your effort values. Considering one vitamin gives you the same effort values as fighting 10 weak Pokemon, I tend to end up maxing out my effort values really early in solo runs. Like, it's not uncommon for me to max out my effort values before the second gym. I've maxed it out before the first gym in some runs with rock gyms starting it. One Pokemon is making 100% of the opposing Pokemons in the entire game faint, so you're gonna max out your EVs really early. Usually by the time I get a vitamin, it's all maxed out. Alright, question two. I got loads of questions about coffee of all things. I'm gonna guess I probably talked about it in an outro and then forgot. So I'll answer this one from John Treadway, who asked what my favorite roast is and if I have a cutoff time for coffee. I actually don't have a cutoff time for when I drink coffee, because for the last year or so, the only coffee I've had is decaf. We've got this really nice brand here named William Partivento, and they've got this decaffeinated coffee that's just fantastic. It's the only decaf that I've had that tastes exactly like regular coffee. Uh, I don't drink pop, and basically all of my tea and coffee is decaffeinated. I usually feel pretty rough after drinking caffeine, so I just rarely have it anymore. Yeah, anyway, that was fun. If you have any burning questions that you just need answered on the show, then make sure to include in your comment MDB AMA, all one word, so that it's easier for me to find. Thanks. Wow, Koga went great. None of his Pokemon hurt us till Weezing at the end, who blew up, and we survived. That means we get to have some fun. I'm going straight for Blaine's Fire Gym. Steel didn't exist in Gen 1, so we're not actually weak to fire moves, so between that and our good special stat, I'm feeling very confident. That and, you know, Blaine plays Pokemon worse than a three-year-old. <laughs> Alright, we have another insane one. Growlithe and Ponyta were easy, but Rapidash was faster than us and made us flinch twice in a row with Stomp. Because of that, we took tons of damage and could have fainted against Dark A9. But, <laughs> but then he illegally used a super potion on the first round while having full health got paralyzed off our Thunderbolt, then fainted on the next turn since we now had a speed advantage. Maybe Blaine's more cut out to be, like, the first gym leader. That means Sylphco's next, we've got the first rival fight that might be hard, and the Giovanni fight. I think the Giovanni fight will actually be easy this time since we only need Sonic Boom for a little bit of his team, but the ground gym is still gonna be horrible. Our rival, though? I'm honestly not super worried. He doesn't have any ground moves, so really the biggest threat is probably Alakazam, but we're a high special Pokemon. I think that as long as we don't get any serious status afflictions or special drops, we should be fine. Rival time. Pidgeot was a one-shot, of course, and second was Water Onyx, who also went down in one hit. Growlithe was also a one-shot, but Alakazam was next and he was faster than us. Now, he could have done something dangerous, but instead he used Confusion, so we just took him down. Last was Venusaur, who failed to get us with a Poison Powder of all things, before we took him down. Well, that was easy. Time for Giovanni. His first two Pokémon are one-shots with Thunderbolt, so our first real challenge is Rhyhorn. I switched between Swift and Sonic Boom a little bit to try and figure out what did more damage. Seems like Sonic Boom does just a little bit more, so I used that for the bulk of the fight, but man, he did a ton of damage to us. He can lower our defense and everything, so being in a long fight is pretty bad. We got to Nido Queen, but we didn't last long. Body Slam hits us real hard after the defense drops. Maybe if I just try this a few more times. So, after a few more tries, I managed to get past Rhyhorn with more health, but Body Slam is still messing us up way too badly. We're finally consistently losing. This is where the run is going to get hard. I still have lots of trainers left. Let me go get a few levels and come back. Okay, after many tries at level 58, I have this run where we win just by the complete and total luck of Nidoqueen using stuff like Scratch. 
As soon as she body slammed, she crit to nearly take us out, so it was still close, but we finally got a win. The ground gym is gonna be horrible, won't it? First though, the psychic gym. Yeah, it was super easy until Alakazam, who at least tried to fight us with Psybeam, but probably would have done much better if he used Psychic instead. We won. Ready to go lose to Giovanni for the rest of the run? Make your guesses now on what level we'll need to be before we win. I'm personally guessing level 85. Let's go give it a try. So, first off, we have a super long fight with Rhyhorn. It went okay, but we lost some defense. Next was Doug Trio, who obviously was going to one-shot us with Dig, but he used a guard spec illegally well underground, and because Swift hits Pokemon during Dig in Gen 1, we got two hits and knocked him out without getting hit. That's the luckiest thing that could have possibly happened. Next was Nidoqueen, and things were going great until near the end when we got poisoned. We did a lot of damage to Nidoking right after, but the poison did catch up with us. You know what the worst part is? If we didn't get poisoned, we'd have beaten Nidoking, and because this is Gen 1 and Rhydon has Fissure, he'll use it forever. We'd have won this on the first try, all thanks to Insane Doug Trio luck. It's not gonna go that well next time, is it? Level 65. Rhyhorn goes badly, we beat Doug Trio with a little bit of health to spare, but we still get beaten up way too much even without getting poisoned, and we can't make it past Nidoking. Man, if I could just get faster than Doug Trio, then he wouldn't get a chance to hit us with Dig. We only need a two-shot with Swift, after all. Level 70. Rhyhorn goes amazingly this time, and we ended up critting to one-shot Doug Trio, so that was a great start. Against Nita Queen, we take a little bit of damage, but really, we stomped her pretty hard, so I was just paranoid about getting poisoned against Nito King. It never happened, though. He went down fast, and last was Rhydon. Because the AI never runs out of power points in Gen 1, he'll just miss with Fissure forever, so we can take our time winning the fight. Man, I way overshot. I thought this was going to take a lot longer to win this fight. Alright, well, let's go do our rival fight. First was Pidgeot, who was a one-shot, and second was Rhyhorn. Now, I don't know how, but his Rhyhorn is way harder than Giovanni's. He brought us all the way to 50 health by the time we whittled him down, and that was followed by me one-shotting his entire team until Venusaur. We hit him for less than half his health but paralyzed him, as he hit Razor Leaf to nearly take us out. I was hoping Paralysis would save us, but we dropped him to a sliver, and he finished us off. Ugh. Alright, let's just try a few more times. I think we just need a little bit better Rhyhorn luck. Next try, and I get a little bit better luck on Rhyhorn, but it didn't matter since Venusaur used Vine Whip instead, so, you know, we won. I... Why can't you just do that the first time? <laughs> Alright, we're on our way to the Elite Four to end the run. We're in the low level 70s, so about average for this point in these challenges. I've got to say, I'm feeling pretty hopeful about this one. The only ground types we have to fight in the Elite Four itself are Onyx, and they're super weak to Sonic Boom. Other than that, I could see us being able to sweep a lot of the end of the game. Lance might be hard, and I could see the rival's ride on being an issue, but either than that, I'm feeling pretty good. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. You know what? 183 special has got to be some of the highest special for a Pokemon in the low 70s that we have ever had in one of these challenges. We're not super fast, but I think that it's enough that we can probably sweep a decent amount. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Yeah, it's basically a sweep. Well, at least that means grinding will be easy. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. This was super easy as expected outside of the couple of Onyx that could stall us for a while. Rage can actually be an issue because of how much we have to hit them, and thus how much attack they have to build, but they never made us faint so it was fine. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. This could have gone worse if not for her Gengar at the start using Dream Eater while we were awake, and then missing Hypnosis. I love Agatha's insane AI. We took her down pretty easily. I'm feeling good about this. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. I wish there was some big action-packed battle to recap, but Lance spent most of the fight using agility, even when he was faster than us. He really threw this fight. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. Right away is Pidgeot, who is a one-shot, and second was Alakazam. We got super lucky on this try and he wasted his time with Reflect, then Thunderbolt paralyzed him so we could finish him up without getting hit. 
Rhydon is a beast though. He kept lowering our defense with Leer and Tail Whip and using Fury Attack for surprising damage. It took forever to take him down and our defense was absolutely ruined by the end. <laughs> Best part? Every time he uses Leer or Tail Whip, it activates the badge boost glitch against our will, so all of our stats but our defense are actually higher than usual, but the moment we beat him we leveled up and that undoes the glitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's no good. Water Onyx was a one shot, but after that was RK9 who's faster than us and finished us off easily with takedown. Brutal. Let's try again in a few more levels. So after losing four tries to ride on, we had this try where we still got beaten up real badly and lost all six stages of defense, but we took him down and were a few levels higher than last time. Water Onyx is still a one shot and this time we're faster than RK9 and one shot him too. Last was Venusaur, and although he wasn't a one-shot, he went for Solar Beam. That takes two turns, so we were able to finish him off and get the win. Well, that's really not what I was expecting. I thought we'd be more frail, but the extra special defense from having our special combined like that paid off big time. Really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge will be up next Saturday like usual, with Pokemon Black with one Sand Dial. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time! Now, I don't want to spoil too much, but I have actually started playing that Sand Dial run. I'm a few days in because I'm recording this voiceover a little bit later than I'd like to, uh, in the week that is. That Sand Dial run is crazy. I started with the ability Moxie, which is uh, every time you make a Pokemon faint, you gain one stage of attack. Oh my god, that that tiny little adorable alligator is an absolute beast. That run is going to be crazy. Um, where I'm playing right now, I'm not at the Elite Four yet, so I don't know if things are going to get a lot harder there. I kind of suspect that the fighting Elite Four member is going to be a real big problem, because so far most of the problems I've run into in that Sand Dial run is uh, when I run into a strong fighting type or maybe a normal type with like tons of health. That can be a problem too. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. I, I'm supposed to fight the Elite Four later today, so I guess I'll find out, and you'll find out in like a week. Uh, I need to go edit this stuff, because <laughs> I'm, I'm recording this voiceover so much later in the week than I thought it was going to, so it's going to be a little bit of a rush to edit this one. So, uh, look forward to all the editing mistakes. Actually, you know what? If there's no editing mistakes, it's because I got the video done early, I put it up for early viewing for you guys on Twitter, so people on Twitter get to see it earlier than everybody else. It's free, by the way. You can just go look at my Twitter. Um, and yeah, whenever I put it up early, people end up catching all of my editing mistakes early. So if you've been wondering why there's less editing mistakes in the videos recently, it's not that I stopped noticing them. I am a flawed editor. I'm fully aware. Uh, however... Uh, people catch them early now because I put it up early on Twitter, and so I'll re-render out a new fixed version when those problems occur. A lot of problems started occurring when I updated my, uh, my editing software and a lot of things got messed up, but there's also plenty where I just don't notice something or I make a typo or whatever. It happens. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me. I gotta go get this edited. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.